Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. It's Dare playing Elden Ring and we're doing another weapon guide and today's is the top four best claws. And of course there are only four claws in the game and again if you have a problem with me naming it top four then that sucks because I'm going to do the same thing I typically do in these videos. I'm going to rank them based on how good they are compared to each other and I'm also going to show you how to get all of them. So we're just going to dive on in and start it off with number four, the Raptor Talons. And so you're going to want to make your way up to the Altus Plateau region, actually kind of the Mount Galmir subregion. And uh make your way over to the Sage's Cave. And the only way to get to here, or the only way that I've figured out so far, is to come through this area. So it looks like a lake, but you can run right along the shoreline here. You can run right past all these poisonous flowers and right up to the Sage's Cave. So once you've made your way through here and into the Sage's Cave, you're going to need to navigate uh, behind a number of secret walls. And now I will try to remember how to get exactly to it, uh, because it always takes me a little while. But basically, anytime you see something that might be suspiciously a secret wall, you're going to want to go ahead and hit it or roll towards it or something like that like that to get rid of it because these are going to be behind a number of them. All right, and so here's our first group of chests. It might be in them, but I don't think it is. I think it's down here. So if you hop down from there, there's another secret wall right, right here. Oh, and apparently s several enemies. I should be using these two-handed, but I'm not. I should also get rid of these skeletal remains before they just spawn back into another enemy for me to fight. There we go. I'm gonna go in two-handed. Uh, I think they're in one of these ca uh, chests in this next one. I think. It's hard for me to remember. I wish I would have jotted down the specific location. But if not, there's one more area where there's a hidden wall with some chests behind it. Catch. So here's another chest that I must have missed my last time through with a stone sword key in it. Here's another one, another hidden wall that'll be uh, hiding a chest right up and around this corner. Two more chests right there. Uh, like I said, I'm pretty sure it was in that second one because it's not past here. So uh, yeah, that is how and where you find the raptor talons. I wish I could have been more specific, but it's behind one of those hidden walls. Once you've made your way into this cave, it's really not that difficult to just go through all of them. And so as far as stats on this one go, we have a max attack power of 528 and an average guarded damage negation of 21.8. Attributes required to use this one are strength of 6, dexterity of 14. Uh, we have a passive effect, which is that it causes uh, 60 points of blood loss buildup, so that's pretty great. It has the quick step uh, special ability, which is pretty fun for quickly circling around your opponents, and it can be upgraded using Ashes of War. And so obviously, just all of that aside, look-wise, it, it is great for a Wolverine-style build. So as far as using this goes, well, I mean, I could just show you right away the quick step. I like the quick step attack. So it allows you to quickly just kind of scoot around people. It uh, would probably be, <laughs> probably be better to demonstrate uh, using it in front, front on combat. Oh, oh, I was going to say, what the hell? He's not noticing me, and then I remembered what armor I was wearing. <laughs> Makes you a little bit more sneaky in the game. But yeah, so the, the ability allows you to quickly maneuver around people. But yeah, that is number four. I can understand if uh, people really, really like these ones the best, and they might consider them to be the best. Obviously, they're great because you can put Ashes of War on them, and uh, they scale with dexterity primarily. So if you're going to do these ones, you're going to want to make sure you uh, focus specifically on getting your dexterity nice and high, because if you do, that, it'll, it'll make them all the more effective. But yeah, that is number four. Let's move on to number three. Okay, now we're going to move on to number three. All right, and so at number three, we have the Hook Claws. So these ones are going to not be a lot of people's favorites because of the style. They have like a wooden block that you're holding onto that has claws on them. So I know a lot of people probably don't like that, but I think they uh, work even better for a Wolverine-style build because they have three claws. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind how they look. They look a little silly, I guess, but I don't mind. As far as stats on these ones go, we have a max attack power of 559 and an average guarded damage negation of 23.2. Attributes required to use these are 14 for dex and strength for 8. And again, these are going to scale primarily with dexterity, but also strength. Uh, they have a passive effect, and that is that it causes blood loss buildup. Again, 60 points, so pretty dang good. Uh, these ones, again, have the quick step special ability, and they also can be upgraded using Ashes of War. As far as finding these weapons go, they can actually be attained, or I should say it can actually be attained decently early 
early in the game, so you're going to want to make your way up to Stormvale Castle. Once you've made your way up to the main gate, you're going to find Gatekeeper Ghostock in, uh, right next to the main gate in the gate side chamber, and uh, he will either give you the option to have him tell them to open the gate, or you can take his secret back way around where you jump out through a hole in the wall and follow the ledges, and you'll make your way over to the Stormvale Cliffside, which is where I am right now. And then you just have to kind of sneak your way into the castle to get these. Of course, it's harder to sneak when this guy blows the horn on you. Whoa! Whoa! That's not what I wanted to do. So that clearly was, isn't what I intended to do. We're going to actually dual wield these. Clearly, I'm not going to be able to depend on my jumping, dodging, and rolling uh, tactics. He's facing the other way. Why would he blow the horn? Yoinks. There we go. On the bright side, these deal quite a bit of damage, so... And the uh, exile soldiers don't have the best armor. So yeah, we're just going to continue through here. And then this corpse, leaning up against the wall back here, is going to be where you're going to find him. So he will have a set of these on him. And uh, like I've shown with uh, the first claw weapon, and it's going to be the case with all these claw weapons, uh, if you just have a single set of them and you go into two-handed stance, it will put one on either hand. Or if you've got two sets, you can dual wield them. Uh, so yeah, that is where you find it, like I said, on that body in the bottom of this little cellar right near the beginning of Stormvale Castle. And again, they're going to act like most claw-type weapons. They're going to be real great for stealth. I mean, you can use them in a direct-on assault, as you saw near the end of my... Uh, First a little demo section for the first one, but uh, obviously very stealth based weapon. Here I'll show you the two-handed. So you can see the, the two-handed moveset is pretty rapid. Here's our quick step. I gotta get the hang of the quick step. <laughs> I'm so used to rolling that I'm calibrating my attacks for that. Yeah, you can really jump around with these bad boys, but anyway. They're great weapons, they deal a lot of damage, you can really inflict pain on people fast with these things, but very, very powerful weapons. So that's number three, the Hook Claws. Let's move on to number two. All right, and so at our number two spot, we have the Venomous Fang. I know a lot of people will disagree and will say that this one's the worst, but I personally find them to be quite good. Uh, and I also think they look pretty cool, so it's like a snake's mouth that you're holding onto that just has a little pokey part that sticks out. So they got a pretty cool design. As far as stats on these bad boys go, we have a max attack power of 581 and an average guarded damage negation of 24.2. As for attributes required to use this one, strength of 9 and dexterity of 9. Pretty low level weapon. Passive effects, we have that it causes poison buildup and actually 72 points of that, so a pretty powerful uh, poison attack, one of the most in the game as far as passive effects go. This one has, again, the quick step special ability and also can be upgraded using Ashes of War, so you can upgrade these ones to your heart's content. So excellent weapons there. And so as far as where to get these ones, I'm actually starting a little farther away just so I can show you how to get to the specific location. So we are here at the Kalem Ruins, and we're going to be going over here to the abandoned cave, but you kind of want to, I find it the easiest to come from up here to make the approach. Alright, you're going to make your way to the edge of this ravine right here, and then you can see that there's a cave across there, and you can get to it either by just running and double jumping with your horse, or jumping down on that branch and crossing over. I'm just going to run and jump with my horse. And so that is how you get across here. Like I said, you can also just walk across that branch there, but I find the running and jumping with the horse is a bit easier. And so now the trick with this cave is that it is entirely full of scarlet rot, so that is what most people would consider no bueno. So basically, I just like to keep my uh, preserving boluses on me. I'm not going to want to talk much while we're going through here. I'm just going to sprint. You're going to have to make your way all the way to the back, and before the boss fight, there's going to be a room with a big poisonous flower, and there's going to be a stack of abductor virgins that you're going to want to climb up and get this weapon, so... All right, and that is how you get up to the spot, and it's going to be right on this body here. So like I said, just make sure you've got your uh, boluses so you don't die from Scarlet Rod on the way, or you've got something that's just going to offer you a lot of resistance, and then just run your way all the way to the end to this room with the big poisonous flower in it, climb up this stack of abductor virgins, and you can pick it up right on this body. All right, and as for using these, like I've showed before, you can either go into two-handed mode and pop one on either hand, or you can dual wield. But of course, to dual wield, you will have to have two of them, and these are something that can only be attained once per journey, 
So if you're going to want to get them without someone else giving you one, you're going to have to do a new game plus game mode. As far as using them goes, they're going to act a lot like other claws. Uh, deal decent damage in many different ways. There's a jumping heavy attack, followed up by just a standing one. Here's a charged heavy attack. Oop, we released it a little early. Also, I wasn't aiming at him. But yeah, that is number two, the uh, Venomous Fang. Like I said, I know a lot of people don't like them, probably mostly because they prefer the bleed effect uh, to the poison effect. And I can see that. The bleed effect is pretty dang useful, uh, probably more broadly so. But the Venomous Fangs have a higher damage. They can also be upgraded with Ashes of Ore, and their uh, poison effect is very effectual. So that's why I put the uh, Venomous Fangs at number two. So let's move on to number one. All right, and so for our number one spot, we of course have the Bloodhound Claws, the overall best claw type weapon in Elden Ring. As far as stats on these go, we have a max stack power of 572 and an average guarded damage negation of 25.3. Attributes required, 15 for dexterity and strength of 10. And these ones are actually going to uh, scale primarily with strength and then dexterity as a secondary. Passive effects, we are again going to be causing that 60 points of blood loss buildup. Uh, this one is upgradable using Ashes of Ore, so you can upgrade them to be even better than they already are. And you have the special attack of the, or the special ability of the Bloodhound step, which is basically just an upgraded in every way quick step. So it operates a lot of the same way, but even better, and I, I can't wait to show it to you. As far as how to get this goes, you're going to want to make your way up to the Volcano Manor area. Once you've made your way to Volcano Manor, you can either progress through the storyline until you are asked to investigate a secret passageway or something like that, or you can just go into this room here, and right over here you'll find a secret passageway, which you can either get into by slashing it or just rolling into it and it will open up. Once you're inside, you'll of course find a number of creatures throughout the area, but you're going to want to make your way through until you find the Bloodhound Knight. And so after killing the serpents in this room or just running past them, you can either go to the left over there to get some uh, a powerful ash summon, or you can go down these stairs to go where we're trying to get to. And once you get into here, you're going to find the Bloodhound Knight, looking like a creep. And once you've killed him, you'll be able to pillage his corpse and pick up a pair of the Bloodhound Claws. So that is how you get this weapon. The Bloodhound Knight can be a decently difficult fight. You can see there he took quite a bit of my health away. But uh, once you've defeated him, you'll have your weapon. And so that's how you get the Bloodhound Claws. So as far as these claws go, not only are they an excellent weapon that uh, can be used like I've showed before. You can just go into two-handed mode and you can kind of dual wield them. Or you can just have a, a pair of them and actually dual wield, which unlocks the dual wielding moveset. Uh, which is going to be where you're going to see the most powerful DPS. Uh, but anyway, the thing that makes these uh, this weapon really special isn't really the fact that they do all the damage and they have a bleed effect and they can kind of bypass sh people's blocks and stuff because all the claws do that stuff. The thing that makes these ones even more special is because of that the innate ashes effect. So uh, the, it, here it's called the Bloodhound Step. It's basically just an upgraded of the Quick Step. This is actually an extremely useful thing, not just for combat. It, it can also be very useful for traversing difficult areas and making your way through slow moving things that'll damage you like lava or Scarlet Rot or other things like that. So it can be very useful just for traversing difficult areas of the map, but it's also extremely useful for combat. So you saw me use it against the Bloodhound Knight. Uh, I find it, and they're they're real fun. I, I think they're also decently fun for PvP. I know uh, people don't seem to like it when I use them in PvP, but uh, they're fun. Uh, I definitely enjoy them. So yeah, that is, that is Claws in a nutshell. They're excellent weapons. Like I said, I think a lot of people probably don't consider them, uh, just because there are other alternatives for a lot of the things that these can do. But there are not uh, weapons that can do everything that Claws can do. Not to mention, just from a roleplay perspective, it's pretty fun to go through... In li and like I said, what I like to call a Wolverine-style uh, build. That is my top four best claws and where to find them. I've showed you what they can do, where to find them, all their stats, how cool they look, and their special abilities. Hopefully, uh, you liked this video and it was useful. But in any case, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.